Welcome back to Comic Confidential, the weekly podcast where we bring you the hottest comic book, movie, and TV action. I'm your host, Cade, and alongside me, as always, is Troy. What's up, my amigo? Amigo. Oh, you're yeah. going back to like these funny intros. Just trying to just, just I wouldn't call it funny. <laughs> Like weird. Yeah, maybe yeah, weird. If that's what you mean, but definitely not like actually like funny. I think the funny part is it's like a joke that you're trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My life is a joke. I get it. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a failure. <laughs> uh, look at point, me now, every, everyone. The point of the story is never try anything. That's exactly right. I'm pretty sure we've, um, <laughs> we've put that out there before. It just, it always pays to just give it your nothing. I think so. You know? Don't ever give it your all. Someone else is always going to take care of it. Maybe give it some. Enough to make it look like you're caring. Well, maybe just enough for somebody to be able to, like, pick it up and and be able to palm it off to. Because if you don't ever start, you can't palm it off. That's a good point. Palming off is, is like, palming off. Palming off is, like, (laughs) half half the fun of, like, doing stuff. That's true. Palming off. Palming off. Uh, Speaking of palming off. Uh, I have absolutely no segue. Oh, there. wow. I was going to say, are you going to lead into the Brooklyn Nine-Nine? I wasn't, but... Uh, that, Let's <laughs> that pretend w- you did. <laughs> that would have made sense. Uh, but yeah, so Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we spoke last week uh, fairly extensively about a whole bunch of show cancellations and how we're all sad and whatnot. Uh, but we got some happier news this week. So one of them is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Pretty much immediately, like two days after uh, we spoke about it, it got picked up by NBC. I don't even think it was days after. I, I honestly feel like it was 12 hours after it I got picked up by NBC. Yeah. I it don't got, think it was the next day, was it? No, I, I think it was because there was like talks that Hulu were going to pick it up, like which we kind of called. Yeah. And then Hulu were like, nah, not for me. Yeah. And then NBC, NBC picked it up. Yeah. And there's been like a lot of speculation that this was just a big publicity stunt. Really? Yeah. Oh, I haven't which, heard that. Which I kind of believe. How so? Well, how else are you really going to drum up this hype that you've just got Brooklyn Nine-Nine to go onto a new, I guess, channel than to say, hey, got dumped rather than it actually got bought? Well, maybe. I mean, like, I guess so. But like, if that's the case, I feel like NBC would have bought it ages ago because one of the one of the executives came out and said, hey, if we had have known that Andy Samberg was going to be cast as the lead, we would have picked it up then. Oh, really? Yeah, because obviously they have a long history with Saturday Night Live. It's the the, the oh, station yeah, that of course. Saturday Night Live. How did and that it, slip through? Well, I guess they just they didn't realize or, or didn't know at the time who was actually going to be the cast. Obviously, an intern read it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, typical interns. Bloody interns. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of it was one of those things, and they're like, yeah, if, if we had have known that Andy Samberg was going to be the lead, we never would have passed. We've always seen that as a missed opportunity. So now it's on the market. We're snapping it up. Do you think they're going to give it more than the eight, one extra season? I guess it's really going to depend on how it rates. I think there's plenty of material there for it to happen. But there's, yeah, yeah I don't know. I mean, it's all going to come down to how it rates on NBC and how, like, where they can take the story. They might just wrap it up after one. There's yeah. no reason why they couldn't. I'd be almost silly to, like, do that. To, to buy it for one season yeah. and then wrap it up. and then just wrap it up. It's like, yeah. what are you really going to gain financially from that? Yeah, true. Uh, I guess, you know, just the, the fan reaction was insane, though. And yes. I think for, for companies to kind of ignore that would have been madness because uh, they had celebrities. You know, Guillermo del Toro was like one of the big proponents for it to be picked up again. Kicking up a storm, mate. He was like the only network TV that he watches and this sort of thing. And, you know, so. Oh, what's that say for the rest of the shows? Hey, am I right? Hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, you know, just, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But fantastic that it's been picked up. Gets at least one more season. But I reckon it'll go for a couple. It's just going to depend. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, if shows like Archer can constantly get new ep- uh, like new season like don't get me wrong i love the tv show archer yeah but you know that has a very like select demographic that it's going to cater to whereas i feel like brooklyn 99 like probably falls in a very similar humor sort but, of yeah but just like on a, a grander scale well less less crass you know like less sexualized and stuff like that absolutely as well then that's it okay let's let's put it on onto another tv show that just seems like it's never going to disappear and i'm happy about this yeah is Arrested Development. Yeah. That just keeps coming back. So it's about to drop season five yeah. on Netflix everywhere else but Australia. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and like, We probably should have spoken about this weeks ago when this news came out. But yeah. 
Come on, Foxtel. If you're not going to give the Comic Confidential boys some free <laughs> membership to your subscription service. Just us. Just us. Maybe a listener. Yeah. Maybe one. Maybe all of them. Maybe all of them. But mostly us. Yeah. Don't do this shit. Yeah. Because you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. Well, this is the whole this this is the whole Agents of Shield thing again, and we'll talk about that pretty soon. But this is the this is you know, it's a popular show. It's a show that has like quite a like rabid fan base, and it, there is just no one in Australia willing to play it. Like Seven Mate has it on half a season too late, kind oh. of thing. Like they're they're sort of when we were getting into the to the late teens of episodes, they were playing like episode nine or ten or something like that. Yeah, it's so, ridiculous. Yeah, so it's absolutely ridiculous. And I feel like there was two seasons that just like got deleted from yeah, Australian yeah, TV. We didn't even get. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Arrested Development, it's about to come back for season five. I think it's like it's supposed to be very soon. It's within the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, and we won't get it. No, Netflix, not at all. Netflix are also adopting this new, um, they're dropping uh, a single season over two drops. So they're not, they're effectively not letting you binge the whole, like the whole season in one go. I bet I know how long the gap is. How long? Longer than what their free trial is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it'll that be. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, it is months, uh, actually. The is gap, it really? The gap is months, yeah. Ooh. They're trialing it with a couple of shows. I think Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, when that comes back for its fourth season, that's going to be another one, another one that they're going to do over two. Okay. Uh, yeah, but Arrested Development going to be over two lots. They should just release them weekly. Well, they do with some shows. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Like, why are the rules different for everything? Yeah, so it's it's maybe it's got something to do with the, uh, with the, the licensing rights or the, you know, the... What's the word I'm looking for? The production. No, not the production, but the the screening rights, whatever it is. You know what I'm trying to say, though, that they have. Yeah. That, you know, some of the shows they can only release once a week, whereas the ones that they have total control of, maybe they can just dump out there and just go, here's a whole season. Bye. Well, a really good example of this would have been Black Lightning. Yeah. Which got released everywhere else, um, I guess, weekly. Yeah. But Australian Netflix got it two weeks later than everyone else house because it also aired on foxtel here yeah. i think foxtel is basically the one that's fucking it for everyone let's be honest yeah it's pretty much um the reason why all of this shit is happening uh but let's talk about agents of shield because that also just got picked up for another season possibly yeah. it's last we don't know i think it will be because it's going to be a half season and yeah. from all reports there's going to be a long delay in between what happens so uh, in between the seasons yeah so what I yeah, think... It's, it's like American summer of 2019 yeah, or something which, is coming out. Which is a long, long time away, which coincides with what, Troy? Avengers 4. Yes, it does. So what I think is going to happen here is obviously the ramifications of Avengers Infinity War is obviously going to affect Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we're not going to get the payoff until the next, I guess, Avengers movie comes out. Or, now we're coming up to the finale this week, so we won't really talk about it, but... Is uh, or actually by the time we go, we put this episode out, the finale will have aired. Oh right, yeah. So we won't really go into to you know how we think it's going to end or anything. But do you think they're also potentially doing that for the flip side, so they can avoid the ramifications, so they don't have to do anything about it now, and then when they come back, Avengers Four has happened, and then anything from Avengers Infinity War is done, so they can just keep going back into it. Maybe. You know what I mean? So they don't even, they don't even have to it approach it. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Could be that. Could be that. Yeah. It's probably exactly that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But I'm very excited that that's um, been picked up. Another show that's been picked up, I Zombie, been picked up for its final, uh, I think it's fifth and final season. Yeah, fifth and final. They've decided that the fifth is going to be the last one. Um, so that's pretty good as well. That's a that's a really good show. Yeah. Did you watch that? I, I do. I haven't watched this season. Guess why, Troy? No internet. No internet. So I have to wait until I get my internet connection again, and then I can jump onto the lovely Stan platform yep. and stream this baby week to week. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a good thing about Stan too. They are a lot of the shows that you know we do want to see. They are doing week to week as well. Uh, and the other one that got picked up is um, Gotham. Yeah, for another for another final season, uh, also a shortened season. So an, a shortened season. Yeah, a shortened season. Wow. And apparently, this is all going to lead towards Batman. Uh, Batman. Baby yeah, Bruce right. Wayne finally becoming Batman. Which, uh, unless they skip forward a few years and, and change the actor, I don't see how they're going to do. You know what? I think that's exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get like final episode, and it will. We'll go down to the final episode. We'll see 
Jerome become like the official Joker. Yeah. Well, actually, they've kind of said that he's not the official Joker in that universe. Well, because they they can't use it because of the like rights with Warner Brothers or something really? like that. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't fully get into it because I don't care. Yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> well, you know what? To be but fair, yeah. he was he was actually a fantastic, and I'm saying bunny quotes here is a is a Joker because yeah. like I tell you what he was like channeling his in a Heath Ledger for it. Yeah, right. Look, I have heard really good things about his performance. Really good things about this last season as well, even it's though It's actually great. Yeah, I haven't jumped on and board I, yet. And I hate Gotham, <laughs> but I'm loving it. What's wrong with me? Yeah, but um, so that's what it's all going to That's what it's all gonna be. That's going to be its final season. Last episode will be big time jump, and yep. then it'll be a silhouette of the Batman. Yeah, something like that. Very uh, small villain. Small villain. Stuff like that, uh, which is all very fitting that we're talking about this because obviously later on in the show we are going to be talking about our favourite live action comic book TV shows. That we are. Okay, it's not just stuff being renewed on the TV. There's a whole bunch of new stuff coming as well. Is that characters, movies, uh, books, movies, comics? TV shows, uh, stuff, movies, <laughs> characters, all Actually, of it. All Everything of it. you said. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, though, was um, that Kevin Feige has revealed that Miss Marvel will be joining the MCU at some point in time. I believe it was, uh, you know, uh, into phase four, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but Troy, isn't Miss Marvel already in the MCU? Ah. Say the internet, boys. <laughs> Say the internet. Uh, no. So this is the this is the Kamala Khan version of Miss Marvel. Uh, she will be the first uh, Muslim superhero, indeed, on the um, big screen. A Pakistani superhero mm. on the big screen, not uh, to be confused with DC's Legends of Tomorrow. They already have one. We know. Uh, yeah. So this is a big thing. So not only are we talking about kind of. Um, you know, really strong representation on the big screen for uh, for Muslim people, Pakistani people, all that sort of stuff. Um, but the the character itself is um, like a lot of fun and has a lot to do with kind of like you know the other sort of younger heroes as well, like the Miles Morales Spider Man. You know, that was, sort of I was stuff. Like the ask young that. Avengers. Yeah. yeah, because she she is a younger character. And yeah. She's she's one of your like your favorite, a fan favorite, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You've been calling for for more Miss Marvel to be. Put in everything, mate. For the longest time, I have, yeah. Now, there's been a lot of people that are kind of concerned that it's going to be too kiddish uh, okay. because, you know, they are technically, well, she is technically like a high school kid and do we need another high school kind of like drama sort of thing or like romance or comedy or whatever you want to call it, like similar to what we had with uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Do yeah. we need more of that? I say fuck yeah. Hell Why yeah. not? Spider-Man Homecoming was one of the best Marvel movies to be released in the longest time. Yep. Sits in my top five, sitting on an edge, but it's right up there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Look, and this is the thing. Like when we went through and did those top fives, um, you know, for me, it changes all the time. Oh, mate, it depends what way the wind's blowing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've got my, my guaranteed top two, right? But that's about it. Anything yeah. else can kind of float in and float out. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming for me definitely sits within my top five most of the time. If well, not always. This week we kind of did a little Marvel test of like, what what's your top? Oh well, rank the whole entire MCU. Yeah, yeah. And um, a little online quizzy type. Yeah, thing. yeah, it was close, but like it's flawed. It is very flawed. Uh, many many listeners have probably done this. It's been doing the rounds of the internet. Yeah, um, it's I don't know. Mine was fairly like mine was fairly good. I think the only thing was. Um, there was a little bit of it, like Infinity War was too high. I don't yeah, know how absolutely. it got there. It's, you want to know why? why? Because it kept going up against movies like The Incredible Hulk and Ant-Man and Thor. No, I suppose, yeah. So the movie's at the back sort of level of, of your list and it keeps beating those like, oh, well, this dude, like it's beating all these movies. Exactly. You must love it. Well, you know what, Algorithm? You're wrong. I do love it, but not that much. It's not my number two movie. It's a platonic love. I'm not in a relationship with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, <laughs> back on track, I guess. So I really like, you know, we both really enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming and why not? And it was that fresh kind of that fresh look and, you know, all these fresh new young characters and I'm down for it. And it, it does, it brings the possibility of, of kind of introducing some younger Avengers and they might not necessarily bring in like a Miles Morales Spider-Man, but they might use Tom Holland. He's still a young kid. He's only yeah, 22 definitely. or something. Is there any other like younger characters that like go along with Miss Marvel? 
Well, that yeah. they could like integrate into this current MCU. Yeah, there's um, there is uh, a few. You have kind of put me on the spot. There's uh, Richard Nova. So, oh, okay, yeah, little kid Nova. Um, there is also Armadeus Cho. Hulk. Oh, that I want. I've been asking for that for the longest time. Yeah. So whether they actually go ahead and do that or not, I don't know. I don't know if they will. They should. Why they not? They totally should. Um, yeah, and there's a couple others that I can't think of just right off the top of my head. Oh, there's um, young Scott Summers. Like I think he's like from back in time or something like that. That's just that's who's running around currently in like the new Avengers or whatever. So right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, like the uh, that's what I mean. It, it, there, it brings the possibility of having all these like young characters coming together, but forget all that. Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan version anyway of Miss Marvel is cool. Totally rad. She's rad. She's fun as shit. She's like, you know, I mean, she can like similar to like Ant-Man. She can like big up her body or she can like make it really small. She can like make her fist grow so she can punch things and squash them and stuff. Cool. Like not just her fist. Yeah. She, <laughs> she can make various <laughs> body parts grow is kind of what I'm saying. She has like this weird kind of almost... It's like a cross between like Elastic Man, yeah, and Elastic Man, Mister Fantastic ish type yeah, right. of like other. Yeah, I don't know. I need to find out more about girl. this character. Yeah, I think you should. Um, but you know, again, we can never have enough diversity, and we can never have enough of these strong female characters Definitely. on screen. And they're just cool characters. Like, forget everything else. They're yeah. just rad, rad dude, rad um, to the max. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about something else that's rad to the max, and that's is it Pennyworth. Pennyworth. Woo wee! Who asked for this? You know who, Troy? Who? Me. Did you? I love Pennyworth from Gotham only. Right. So yeah, basically, if you haven't figured it out, what we're talking about is there has been an Alfred the Butler series uh, ordered, basically a uh, director series. Yeah, and no pilot. No pilot, nothing. They're just like, give us fucking 10, dude. I can't remember the last thing this happened to. Mm. Probably Runaways. Maybe, yeah, maybe, something like that. But um, yeah, it, and it's basically going to be an origin story of Alfred the Butler. Is it? Is it anything to do with the current series of Gotham? I don't believe so. That's disappointing yeah. because I really love that Alfred on there. I could watch a whole series on him, Yeah, but I don't know if I could watch posh version of him well i don't think it'd be posh but and and look realistically i don't think alfred is technically that posh he's just got really good manners and all that sort of stuff so he's not like you know he's been through the shit he has he's seen some stuff oh he's done some things he's done some things that he wouldn't be proud of and neither would <laughs> he Mr. would and not Mrs. tell Pettyworth. his mother about those things exactly so you know like it you get to 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 kind of delve into this you know, this kid, but it kind of just becomes a whole very similar kind of to how we've got Gotham now or how we've got, uh, you know, Krypton, Krypton or there's other shows where it's kind of like, hey, you know that character that you really, really like? Well, here's someone closely related to them <laughs> and you might get like a like a, like a a name drop here and there yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff, but, you know. Someone will say Batman to him like way, way, way early on and he'll yeah. be like, I'm going to remember that. Yeah, and I'm going to be like, if I ever... In 60 years. <laughs> when I'm like, you know, at the, 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 the beck and call of some, you know. Little bratty big city, kid. Like billionaire. I'm going to be like, hey, just become a fucking Batman, dude. Yeah. Just like, do it. Instead of like sitting around playing your video games, how about you just like go learn fights? Yeah, go learn fights. I'll do it, but yeah. I'm old as shit. Yeah, I can't do it. My time's done. I got a bad hip. I haven't got a, I haven't got a son. Does he have a son? I couldn't tell you. That'd be so weird, wouldn't it? He's got a niece. That's, mm, that's okay. Alicia Silverstone. Oh yeah, <laughs> was that his niece? Uh, it was yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, his it was. Niece. Yeah, uh, Ben so Alfred was old as fuck though. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. Like, I don't mind the um the Jeremy Irons Alfred from uh the Snyderverse. Yeah, he's great. He's cool too. Yeah, he he looks like he can handle himself. He does. I feel like he looks tougher than what Batman did. He's dressed exactly like Zack Snyder dresses. Yes, but. He looks like, well, no, Zack Snyder looks like he could handle himself too. He does. You know, a little unknown fact though yeah. is that Zack Snyder mo capped Alfred's performance in that movie. No, he freaking did. No, I'm joking, oh, mate. Well, like, what? <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere serious with that. Like, you're crazy. Yeah, no. You're crazy, Jesus. Uh, so, anyway, that's coming. Uh, whether you want it or not, it is on the way. Uh, nothing else to talk about in so far as that yet. What do you want from it? Uh, look, I guess. 
I want him to go duster shopping. Well, no. <laughs> I think it would, like, I imagine it this more... This one like, hasn't got enough feathers. <laughs> it's not that bad. I think you're thinking more of, like, the, the Marvel Comics Jarvis. No. No, even Jarvis seen some shit. He's seen some shit, too. It's all these old-ass men. <laughs> yeah. Like, all war-stricken, man. Well, see that, old man tough. That's what they are. Yeah, they are. They got that old man strength. But that's what I'd want to see, you know, like uh, like I kind of look at it like think of, you know, Kingsman in yeah. the sense of, you know, all this like really cool spy, but it might be like war shit, you know, sort of happening on in the background. But he's also like this real like, you know, gentleman and he has to go to this like um, a butler school, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, like, no. but, but, you know, in the in the middle of doing butler school, like the butler school is actually this secret training ground for like killers and shit well but no like not bad killers i want him to be an mi6 agent yeah who's gone undercover to investigate the waynes and he's playing the long con <laughs> and we find out well i suppose because he he has been with the waynes uh not to be you know confused with the wayans brothers the the waynes uh for like when even when um thomas wayne was a kid right yeah like through that whole thing i no i I thought so. How old is Alfred? Hundred. Is he a vampire? He's six six thousand years old. Minimum. Yeah. Look, I don't know. Anyway, let us know. Did you want a Pennyworth season series? It's coming, whether you did or not. Uh, another thing that is on its way. Two okay. things actually, I want to talk about. Okay. One, Zombie Land sequel finally announced. Boom, boom, coming in twenty nineteen with all the original cast. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. How? Well. You tell me, champ. But Bloody hell. <laughs> well, they're not like, they're not these massive budget movies. Well, that's true. It, it was like very self-contained and it was yeah. like quite realistic in what they did in it. Yeah. Uh, so all the all the original cast is coming back, including Woody. What about Bill Murray? I don't think Bill Murray's coming uh, back. I wanted to come back as a real zombie. Uh, no, didn't they kill him? Uh, maybe they did. Yeah, I think they shot him. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't know if they'll do that celebrity cameo thing again. Cause I they think, will. No, I see they shouldn't though. That's the thing because that's kind of just taking what was super popular from the first movie and doing it again in the sequel, but yeah. bigger. And sequels just, they never do that, man. They're never... You know what <laughs> it's I mean? unheard of. Yeah, it's unheard of. Usually they're just like super original content and whatnot. Totally. Uh, but I am really excited for that. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about, unless you want to talk about Zombieland more. Oh, well, and hook me with what you got next and then I'll decide. Okay. Batwoman. I'll just say that. Ah, yes. Okay, cool. So Batwoman showing up in the uh, CWTV C- multi-TV show crossover that happens once a year between 18 different superhero shows is now introduced. Do you uh, mean, sorry, uh, except for Supergirl. Always includes Supergirl. <laughs> well, it does. Right at the end. It? Yeah. Uh, yeah, is introducing... Is, does, do we know which Batgirl we're getting? We're getting Batwoman. Batwoman. Yeah. Uh, so that is... Um, oh, God. I'm, I'm Barbara like, Gordon? No, that's Batgirl. It's <sighs> uh, Kathleen... Uh, I, wanna, uh, I, can't, I can't think of it. Anyway, Batwoman is a different kind of character. So Batwoman... Don't don't get it confused with Batgirl because they are different. So she's basically just like a super she's rich the socialite woman. as well. Yeah, yeah. So she's like a super rich socialite that decides that you know she's kind of inspired by Batman and wants to be Batman. All right. Um, so she becomes Batwoman. Wow. Did she get the like a patent to use everything? Mm, probably not. She's but did get... Batman? That's that's kind of the important thing. Did he? Well, I'm sure. people can just rip off his stuff. Well, I guess it's Wank Tech. Wank Tech. Wank Tech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty wanky, yeah, yeah. I guess, some of it. Like, I mean, if I had it, I'd be like, hey, yeah, I'm a wanker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they're introducing um, Gotham, officially. We're going to go to Gotham. So, How that's a thing. How dirty do you think they're going to make Gotham look? Pretty dirty. Why is Gotham always, like, such a dirty town, but so many rich people live there? And why is it so crime-ridden? And why do so many rich people still live there? It sounds a lot like Sydney, doesn't it? Does it? Nah, Maybe just kidding, Melbourne. Sydney. Uh, <laughs> it's probably more like Melbourne in the sense of, um, you know, kind of that how it looks with the architect architecture and how old it is and whatnot. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but you know, both of those cities are tops, the best, the best. But Gotham is not. Have nothing on a tropical, thousand degree hot climate like <laughs> yeah. ours. Even even you know borderline on winter. Yeah. Uh, but getting back to what we're talking about, I guess because it is so crime ridden, and that's why it needs. 
a uh, why why it needs a Batman, but it doesn't just need a Batman. It needs a Batman and a Robin and a Batwoman and a Batgirl and a uh, and a Bat Dick Plane and a Red Hood and you know all these people. Everyone, yeah. So there's enough shit going on. How inadequate is Batman? Well, I think he's done a pretty good job for a single man. No. Nah. If he was doing so good, he wouldn't need all these people. Oh, keeps, come he, on, he, he man. He keeps getting Robins killed, man. They they should rename that from Robin to Canary. All right, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. Your regular job, right? Yeah. Could you do all the work just by yourself? Yeah. And hit every deadline? Yeah. And like, I'm pretty good. Yeah, but <laughs> I do you, it anyway. Yeah, see, you're basically the Batman of your design firm. I'm going right? to go say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you should understand, like, it can be done as long as the man is good enough to, to, to get it do done. To do what he needs to. To do what he needs to do. Uh, you know, and he's willing to try, which, you know, whatever. Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, that's happening. What do you think, anyway? Like, yeah, look, um, I think this is like a Hail Mary pass for the, uh, the Arrowverse. This is like what... Does, is this what it needs to save it? Because Legends of Tomorrow is like doing its own thing, which is always great. You can never like fault it because it's the bloody Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Supergirl still pulls in like all the female viewers of the US yeah. because it is what it is. It's a bloody girl show. It's yeah, a show for teenage too. girls. Male viewers too. Male viewers too, maybe. Um, Just not old ass male yeah, viewers. Yeah, well, I like, guess us. You know, you and me. True. Um, the Flash and Arrow are just like straight up poo-poo at the moment. Yeah. Look, I like I've I've dropped everything officially. Yeah. Um, wow! Like D- Legends of Tomorrow, you're taking all, a break. All of it at the moment. Just taking a break. Like I'm still, you know, like <laughs> I I will possibly go back and watch the episodes at some point. Um, but yeah, probably not. Let's be honest. There's so much other good stuff to to, to watch, which again we're going to talk about later. Um, so for someone who has been invested and has dropped off. Will this get it, you back? No, it's not enough to get me back. Would you watch thus just a crossover though? Maybe, it, it, like it because you know the crossovers are just their self-contained sort of things. Yeah, definitely. So I could probably do that. Um, but what do you guys think? Is it enough to save uh, the the CW, CW verse? Verse. That was good. Yeah, I think so. Troy, it's another edition of Trailer Showdown. Trailer Showdown. This week we had another trailer. I guess this might be the official trailer from Mission Impossible 6. Yeah. Because I feel like the one before that was just a teaser. It was a big teaser. But it, it was a big teaser. I feel like teasers are becoming trailers now and trailers are becoming mini movies. Yeah. And the, um, the, the, <laughs> the teaser to the official trailer is now the teaser trailer. Yeah. Does that make sense? This is insane. Yeah. It's, it's getting next level. For sure. We've spoken about it before. It's crazy. It's It's like trailers are a whole new industry. There's trailers and then there's movies. Yeah, exactly. And And the trailer game is big. And sometimes in the case of, you know, some movies, the trailers are the movie because (laughs) they they fucking give you everything anyway. I'm looking at you, BVS. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's just strangely enough, Suicide Squad as well. Like they were the ones that kind of like. Oh, it's Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes, yeah, 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 I'll give it that. They're probably the three that stick out the most. And potentially Venom. Yeah, well, no, poten- potentially uh, Jurassic World. Oh, Fallen definitely Kingdom, that. So oh. I want to see what happens with that. But if anything outside of that trailer happens, I'm going to be fucking amazed. Yeah, pretty much. Seriously. Uh, I'm pretty sure at some point, nah, did Chris Pratt get his shirt off in the first one? I don't think he did. Maybe that was just Maybe he just got like my sweaty dreams. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been in my dreams after. Ooh, that's hot. It is. Uh, anyway, what what are we actually talking about? We're so talk- Mission Impossible yes. 6 and the other trailer that dropped this week, which is going to be in a whole different class, no pun intended, okay. is Deadly Class, which is a new TV show. It is. Based off the graphic novel Deadly Class. Indeed. Uh, and uh, by the Russo Brothers, which is the most exciting kind of thing. They're the guys that have not only done... Don't don't just get them confused for, you know, having done the world's biggest movie of all time, sort of, maybe soon, Infinity War. Uh, they also did Community. They also did uh, Arrested Development. So they've got a history of TV as well. And they're bringing this comic to the forefront. Now, the only thing that might concern me about this is it's on the Sci-Fi channel. So... Yeah. Sci-fi channel <laughs> doesn't usually give us TV shows of the biggest budget. However, with the right directors, you don't need a big budget. 
Well, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're actually going to be directing. I think they're the ones that are just going to be basically kind of like creating it for TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're I, like just producing it. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, and they'll have other directors throughout the series. Um, I have. Uh, I won't say intimate knowledge of the comic because there is about there's about five volumes out. So there's about thirty five issues. Oh, okay. Um, I have probably read the first couple of volumes, which is enough to get me going for for this because this yeah, is right. what's going to kick it all off. Um, I like it, man. Really good comic. Is it really? Yeah. So basically, what we're talking about here is you just it's set in the eighties, and you've got a whole that's a big tick. That's a big tick. You got a whole bunch of kids that essentially go to like a school similar to Hogwarts, except it's called King's Dominion, and instead of doing like magic potion potion classes. They do like beheadings and you know stuff like that, and they're basically trained up to be like assassins. I, I was going to say, is it an assassin school? It's an assassin school. Ah, it's exactly that. I like that. Yeah. Do they learn ballet there? Uh, because every assassin <laughs> obviously has to learn ballet, Troy. Haven't if seen movies it. have told me anything. Yeah. If um, yeah, if it's probably going to happen. Has to. Has to. Uh, yeah. So and then they kind of break off into their own little cliques, and then it kind of it's like the the clique that it kind of follows is like. I want to call them like the uh, the outcasts, the kind of you know the the sort of the unpopular ones. Even though some of them are kind of in the main cliques. Yeah, right. So yeah, so, so like the least cool of the cool kids. Well, yeah, kind of because they're all you know like you know it's the the son of a cartel you know lord and you know uh, I don't know like the the kid of a yakuza yeah cool. sort of thing and all that sort of stuff. So they're basically they're usually sort of coming from generations of crime family. Yeah. Uh, whereas the main guy that this follows, Marcus, uh, basically is just from the streets. Oh, he's just new. Yeah, he's just Fresh new blood. to it. But he's done some shit, you know? Similar to Alfred. He's seen some things. He's seen some things. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, look, it looks really good. Um, I, from what I can tell from the of the trailer, because it's only really, like, it's really short and they kind of inter, intercut it with, you know, scenes of the Rosso brothers talking and stuff. Yeah, and there's, like, a lot going on. Yeah. Like, there's a lot going on. I'm yeah. kind of like... What is this? But I can I can tell you uh, that it looks pretty like well following the source material to a to a T. That's good. It looks great. That's good so far because Marvel's Runaways did that, and that was probably one of the better shows in a long time. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think you know the comic book is great. I do want to continue reading. Uh, just gotta you know gotta find time, man. Oh, I just time started this whole saga journey. Oh yeah, that's got yeah like, I saw that. That's got like a thousand volumes. Good luck. Yeah. So you know I'm only up to volume three, but you know I've got up to volume three already. Wow. You yeah, go, I'm kid. Getting through it now. Something that's got a lot of sagas to it, I guess. Yeah. Is Mission Impossible number six. Number six. Now. I have no idea what's going on, Troy. All I know is that this is balls to the wall. Yeah. Tom Cruise cannot drive. He can't drive. Any he vehicles. should not be behind the wheel. Like, I've seen two trailers of this, and I swear it looks like he's crashed four vehicles. Either he's that, crashed a motorbike. He's crashed a truck. He's crashed two helicopters by the looks of this. looks like two. This guy is not good behind the wheel. Pretty much every movie that Tom Cruise is in, well, you know he's famous for like running and everything. Yeah. But he's also he it's crashes. You can't shit. drive. <laughs> well, yeah, that's exactly. If it. you can't drive, you got to run. It's like, oh, you know, look at me in this plane. Oh, the plane's crashing now. Oh, I guess I'm just gonna have to fucking run. Yeah. Oh, I'll get on this. I'll get in this jeep. Oh, look, I crashed it. Got to oh, run. I'm gonna have to run. Um, Tom Cruise should not be behind the wheel. I bet when he plays like Grand Theft Auto, he doesn't steal cars. He just runs everywhere. Just taps that <laughs> A button lots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, look, it looks amazing. Man, I don't know what's going on, but I love it. I so love you, you, it. We were just talking, uh, I'm going to like off air. Off air. <laughs> the, the light was switched off. The light was switched off. And you were saying that you haven't actually seen anything past Mission Impossible 2? No, I haven't. <sighs> so like, Man. I feel like there's probably spoilers galore in here. Uh, I have no idea. Look, honestly, apart from them kind of being like rogue agents now, which you'd kind of get from the movie... Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Yeah. You know, probably, if you just put two <laughs> and two together. Um, apart from that, probably not. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, no, there's some stuff. Actually, like, now that I think isn't about like it. the main plot device behind this movie a spoiler for the previous movie, the uh, plutonium? It, well, it's more, and, and the fact that you see his wife 
and she has been kind of. Uh, see, I didn't know that was his wife. Yeah. See, well, I just fucked it for you. Didn't wow. I? <laughs> well, anyway, you got to go back and watch them all. That, that's not going to be the biggest thing. That's going to like. It's not going to ruin it for you. Absolutely not. Uh, but Henry Cavill. Oh man, what a what a what a man! What a man! What a like oh, just a fully boy. jacked. Put him in a toaster. I'm lathering up <laughs> him up in some butter. Yum yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty much like toast. If there's anything I ever say about Henry Cavill, it's like, oh boy, toasty. he's toasty. <laughs> but yeah, like he looks, he looks great, and it's really sort of shaping up to be this kind of like his CIA agent slash assassin type dude up against, um, you know, Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt. I reckon they're gonna, he's he's, they're gonna team up, but then Tom Cruise will go rogue, and then they'll be up against each other. Do you think? Now, I don't know if this is an actual fan theory. But check this out, right? Do you think this is a passing of the torch? <gasps> Do you think this could be his way of bowing out of the series, yet the series continuing on under the, the, the stardom of Henry Cavill? That would be amazing. Do you think? Yeah. But Tom Cruise still looks 20 years old. He does. He and does. he still acts 20 years old. It's weird. He's got some weird... And like, he's still got that tooth right in the middle of his <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, that can't be a real tooth. No, it's real. No. <laughs> he's like, he lost both of his front teeth. He's like, just put just one put big one, one in. <laughs> just put one in. <laughs> I don't want to fuck around with two. Yeah. I, I do not have time to brush two teeth. Do you know how many toothbrushes I go through? Yeah, I'm a very busy man. Just put a big one, smack <laughs> it in the middle, and we're done. Uh yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it must do something. I think I think it's um, it like it pops out and he can surf on it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Anyway, Mission Impossible Six that's coming. Uh, so out of the two, what do you think? One. Um, I'm gonna go Mission Impossible Six. Yeah. Because you know what? I don't know what's happening in either of them, but I have more fun watching Mission Impossible Six. Cool. I'll go Mission Impossible Six too, just purely for the action. Uh, but I am really looking forward to Deadly Class when that comes out in 2019. All right, last week was all about our favorite movie trilogies, and this week it's all about our favorite comic book TV shows. That's right, we're back with another Top 5 Showdown as we go head-to-head with some of the best live-action comic book TV shows of all time. Now, Cade, uh, rules, mate. How would okay. you come up with this list? Uh, before we get into the rules, I want to know how it's taken us 123 episodes to do our Top 5 TV shows. Well, no, we see, we've done Top 5 TV shows. Of all time. Oh, okay. Of all genres. Oh, so we haven't... We did that and we had like Breaking Bad and The Wire. Oh, yes. Yeah. But we haven't done... Like we've done animated movies and we've done comic book movies. So we've just like tiptoed around yeah, the subject. kind of tiptoed around it. But now we're doing live action comic book TV shows. And tell me your rules. Holy moly. That's insane. Okay, so I, I had one rule. Right. One rule. And all that rule was is that it had to be... Sorry, I had to. <laughs> had to be live action. Yeah. And it had to have a minimum of two seasons. Ooh. Yeah. yeah okay. Because I wanted to be really tough because, like, I could make a list that's as long as my damn arm about, like, great TV shows. Yeah. Uh, great comic book TV shows. But a lot of those have, I feel, haven't really proven themselves in the long run. I get what you're saying, but I went the opposite uh, yeah. way. <laughs> oh, and you know what? I, I have, like, uh, I can't blame you because there's, like, a lot of TV shows that are fairly recent that... A bloody amazing. Like, I, yep. If I was being honest, if I didn't make this rule, I'll probably have all TV shows that were one seasons. Yeah. Look, for, for me, I kind of went more with, similar to how we did um, like last week with the with the trilogies, I kind of went not necessarily... So completely unrelated TV series <laughs> that might have a character that can cross over but also have hey, a fuck director. Off, <laughs> fuck off. Look, it just, it just while we're on that, uh, we did have... Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about the uh, results of that poll. Yeah, we did have the results of the poll. Uh, for the Cornetto trilogy being a legit trilogy, uh, I just want to say landslide victory. Uh, doubled the amount of votes. Doubled the amount of votes for actual trilogy. So I guess... Genuinely uh, surprised by that. Suck on that. I guess I'm surprised by how many voted for it not. I'm actually disappointed in all of you. And uh, you'll be getting a nasty letter in the mail soon. Because wow. I, I still send letters apparently. Damn. Yep. Their parents are going to be so disappointed. They will. Uh, so anyway, I guess for me, like, I just I just wanted to talk about what I'm really into right now. Yep. Right? And what I'm really digging, what I think some of the best shows, like, kind of, like, now are. Not so much 
of like of all time because you just want to talk about the ones that you're enjoying. Yeah, the ones I'm enjoying the most. Yeah. Some of them have been going for a while, some haven't. Um and the other thing that I kind of like put is the if it had multiple seasons, yes. The good seasons had to outweigh the bad. Yes, of course. Right. So that eliminates <laughs> uh, arrow uh, arrow <laughs> like as an example i'm not gonna like put it around it but you know it eliminates arrow yes arrow has had probably two really good seasons but it's now had four shit ones yeah totally so that to me that can't be on like my all-time favorite list or like you know definitely a- and i guess i didn't look at it like an all-time favorite more just like what is a favorite of mine right yeah. now so we're gonna have two completely different lists and that's fine and that's fine it's good we're gonna get a bit of diversity going on here we are uh, so how about we go with you to kick it off this week? I knew you'd do that because uh, I wasn't even ready. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want me to, t- no. to to kick it off? Well, look, I, I say I wasn't ready. and Wait, have you got a list of like 19 shows again and you haven't whittled them down to what you needed to? I have whittled my list of five down to six and I'm just going to like, you know, just figure it out as I go. Maybe what you need to do is to message me before we start recording and say, hey, can we just make it like a top 87 TV shows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we just talk about TV shows until we don't have any more TV shows to talk about? Okay. Because that's how many I have on my list. That's fair. Anyway, you kick us off. Okay. What do you got as your number so, number five? My number five is iZombie. Oh, damn. Yeah, now this is a TV show that I kind of like jumped on late. Yep. And I saw it on stand. You watched it and you're like, man, you need to get on this. Yep. And a lot of listeners in our community said, get on the show. It's great. Based on a comic by Vertigo. Yep. Slash DC. Yeah, yeah. And um, man, this show is a lot of fun. Look, it is on my list. Is it? It is. Oh. Uh, so we may as well talk about it now. So it it sits at about number three on my list. Yeah. And you know what? That doesn't surprise me because yep. it's one of these shows that like it doesn't really rely on an overarching storyline because each each week is it's like freak of the week type of thing, which is always fun. Yeah, well, what I really like about it is the fact that they kind of, in that kind of vein, but say when you've got a freak of the week like uh, The Flash, yeah. where it's basically The Flash who is just really fast trying to fight the, the the freak of the week, this you get the main actress in Rose McIver who gets to act completely different every single episode. Definitely. So she has her, you know, her overarching character of Liv, right which is you know the mainstay but every episode she eats a different brain and she becomes a completely different person and so she has to act her way through every single episode there is no there's no easy way out yeah and what's great about it is like she eats the brain to kind of help solve maybe the murder that's connected to why this person's dead yeah uh, so you were saying uh, earlier on in the show that you have not seen the latest season yet? No, I'm not. I'm not onto the latest season, which I believe is almost wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. I think there's only uh, a couple more episodes left, maybe, or it might even be done. Um, there's ten episodes out, so I just I don't know how many are. I in think a they do season. thirteen. Okay, which is the the golden number for good TV shows. Yeah, and the worst number for Netflix TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, it's just, it is one of those things where you're kind of getting something different every week. And I yeah. really like that. Uh, great cast around her as well. Um, you know, and they all obviously really sort of, you know, work Bounce well off, off each other. other really, really well. And it's got puns in it. Every oh. single scene change is like wordplay or a pun or something. And that speaks to me. And you know what? When you have Rob Thomas as the producer of your TV show from yep. Matchbox 20. <laughs> <laughs> who comes on the show to get his brain eaten? All right, but that's amazing. Okay, you do know it's not that Rob Thomas. No, ever. it is. <laughs> when you get him on it the, it sounds team. like it sounds like one of those outlandish things that you would say that you might actually like think is true. I think it is true, Troy. I'm telling you, it's not. I think but, it is. You know, I think it's funny <laughs> that he actually did come onto the show and they had Matchbox Twenty on there. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, and, what's your number five? Uh, so my number five then. Now this is a this is a this is oh man this is this is hard. Because, well, look, I just took one off your list. Well, that doesn't mean I get to have five, does it? You, you know what? Mm. Does it? I'll let it slide. Oh my god! <laughs> Someone take a photo or video or something. I'm getting more. Someone time. record this. I'm getting more time. Uh, okay, look, I'm going to go with um, uh, happy. Actually. Really? Yeah, it came out in 2017. Uh, obviously, only had uh, it was about eight episodes uh, from a 
four-issue comic book from uh, Scottish writer Grant Morrison. And basically kind of just, it's got Christopher Lo- uh, Christopher Maloney from uh, Law and Order, SVU. Dun, dun. Yep, thanks. Uh, now we don't have to put it in, which is good. You're welcome. Uh, and he's kind of like Nick Sachs. He's a character. He's kind of like an ex-detective that is now like a hitman for hire. Uh, and it's got Patton Oswalt as uh, this little kind of like imaginary friend blue unicorny thing called Happy. Yeah, right. Yeah. This show does not hook me at all. Have you watched it though? No, I have no internet, yeah. so this is off my list. Okay, because it's it's you know it's it's definitely it's different, and I think that's kind of like why I like it because it's not your traditional like comic book type thing. There's yeah. no real like like there's no superheroes necessarily or anything like that. It's not a superhero comic. Um, but it is kind of, you know, there's like some really kind of fantastic things that happen and just some insane characters. Uh, and it's kind of like, you know, it's dark, but it's funny. Yeah. But it's funny because, you know, it's kind of like as twisted as it is. I've heard really great things about it. And the and the, the lead actor in this, you know, what's great about him is that he does comedy really well. He but does. he also does drama really well. He does. So this sounds like it's a perfect casting for what this TV show is. And he looks like he would fuck you up. Yeah. Like, like he's he a genu- big dude. He's a big dude. He's genuinely jacked as hell as well. He is. Yeah, so look, uh, like I really got into it. Um, I was the same as you in the sense like I hadn't read the comic and nothing really about it kind of appealed to me from what I had seen on trailers. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know, like what's this stupid unicorn thing and stuff like that. But once you actually kind of get into it, like it's very, very binge worthy. I, I like, I powered through. How many episodes? Eight. Okay. I believe there's eight. You, no, could, you, could, bin that. you yeah. could binge that easy. And I think it's about 45 minutes per episode, something like good that length. around there. So good length. Um, and yeah, just, you know, completely knocked it uh, out in a couple of days, I reckon. Wow. And not recent enough that it's a recency bias. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it's been out for a while, mate. It's been out for a while. So I would, I would highly recommend if you haven't seen it, and I'm kind of looking directly at you, champ, uh, go out and see it. I will. As soon as you get some internet. Once I've well, got maybe, some internet. Hey, maybe. Maybe there's someone out there, you know, handsome young man, youngish man, handsome man, uh, that can uh, hook you up with some, uh, you know, some magic, some magic, mm, Maybe. a little magic stick. Wow, who knows? A wand, yeah, a magic <laughs> wand. Uh, what's your number four? Okay, so number four is right down the Stolger Street, and that's Smallville. Four, yeah, number four. Look, when we came into this, I'm like, Kay's gonna have Smallville as number one, surely, surely. Yeah. Uh, mate, turned on its head, and uh, yeah, number four because the um. The rest are going to probably anger you. <laughs> like, I'm, really? I'm, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like Smallville, number four, it's, um, this would have been way up high if it ended on a high. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you had have seen some Superman action. If I got a payoff of 10 seasons uh, and got like what I wanted as yep. a, as a TV watcher, yep. probably would have been a little bit higher. Full suit, undies Full on the suit, outside. Yeah. Undies on the outside. Yeah. I want him saving the day and maybe I want it like Lex going full on Lex. Yeah. Didn't get that. Nope. So still love the show introduced. This is really what got me into comics back in the day. Yeah. Got me into this whole genre. So it's definitely worthy of a top five spot. Um, But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Ten seasons of glorious and then one episode that lets you down. <laughs> uh, well, I got into Smallville late and you were you were actually the reason why I got into Smallville. You were the one who recommended it to me and said, what the fuck are you doing, dude? You got to like, you get on this thing. And you let me your box set DVDs. Oh, that was back in the day, isn't <laughs> back it? Back when that was a thing. Uh, and I think I started, um, I started watching when season maybe four or five was already out. Okay. Something like that. Because this is one of the rare TV shows that Australia actually got aired on TV. Yeah, or I think you might have had the first four seasons on box set or something. Mm. And by the time I kind of like watched those four, I had caught up and was watching it week to week from like, I think it might have been uh, season six or something yeah. maybe. Um, but yeah, you, you were the one who kind of introduced me to it. And it was really kind of like, you know, I watched it all and, you know, you kind of like you you go, hey, that was cool. But then when, you know, 10 years later, you kind of look back and you, you struggle to kind of remember bits and pieces of it. But then you're like, holy fuck, they had that character. They had that character. They yeah. had that character, that character. 
they bought just about every character from the DC into that show at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. In their own little, you know, CW Smallville way. Definitely. Um, so it definitely earns a spot on at least one of our lists. Yes. Because it's not on mine. Wow. Yeah, uh, just purely because... You've got a different you know, type of list, mate. a different list. I've That's got a fair. different list. That's fair. Is it me? It's you, I mate. think it's me. That's my number four. And my number four is now that I zombies off the off the oh. table, right? Because that's number three. But anyway, oh, well, things are, things are messed around now. Uh, number four for me is actually Marvel's Runaways. You know what? It killed me not to put this on my list. Yeah, it, it made my honorable mentions because this was this still is my t- favorite TV show, not just like comic book TV show. Favorite TV show. Damn. Of the and year. What was it about it, really? I don't know. You know what? It's, it's. I, I don't know what the magic source is. Yeah, there's something. It's, I don't know if it's the kids. I don't know if it's the kids. The writing's great. Yeah. The filming's great. Everything is just... I feel like because it was a shorter season as well. Yeah. I think it was, what was it, eight episodes or 13? It was 13, I think, yeah. The magic number for good TV shows, Troy. Yeah. It, um... I don't think it tried to be anything that it didn't need to be. Yeah. It didn't, like, overshoot. Yeah, true. Uh, for, for me, I guess, like, you know, you've got this great cast of kids um, that are, like, almost, not exactly, but almost comic book perfect. Yeah. Like, from the page to the to the small screen um, as the, you know, the runaways. And they've kind of, like, um, I don't know, man. Like, I guess the biggest downfall for me was, and and... Stranger Things is what I think is is kind of like killed it for me because you know it's like once upon a time I was like I don't know I want to watch shit with kids in it yeah I'm the same don't give me shit with kids in it I'm not interested now I just want TV shows just with cool kids in just it just give me cool kids give me kids with like powers and flat tops and like eighties hair and hell you know, yeah yeah all oh, that sort of stuff great hair yeah so look uh, Stranger Things was kind of the one that goes hey if you get a good enough bunch of kids together. Like, you can make some fucking great TV. Absolutely. And I think they did that with Runaways. But what I was going to say is, like, I think the downfall of, of it at points was actually the adults. 100%. So, so when the adults became involved, you're kind of like, hey, no, fuck off. Yeah. Like, I don't want to deal with you and your I, pride I, bullshit. Yeah, exactly. I don't care if you're having an affair or I don't care yeah. if you don't like that person. Yeah. Like, show me, like, the struggle these kids are going through because they're starting to find out they have powers. Give that kid his power glove back. His oh. fucking Nintendo power yeah. glove. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the power is yours. It is. <laughs> Give it fucking back to him and let him punch things. Let's just do it. And it was really, like, it was just, it was really well done. It was kind of very much like, uh, I've heard things like, it's like the OC of superhero shows. I could see that. And I get into that. You yeah, you do mean? love like that was, type of TV yeah, show. I was all about that sort of shit. Uh, way back in the day, it was Dawson's Creek, and then I was, uh, definitely watched all of the OC. Um, Who didn't? Yeah, exactly. I can't remember any it. of their names. Ryan. 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 Detective Gordon now. Summer. Summer. That's all you need to know. And the other ones. The the one that really fell off the rails and the nerdy guy. Yeah. Who's probably super rich. Uh, maybe. Maybe. And the dad, who I feel like is always a villain in every other show. Yeah. And uh, uh, what's her name? Speedy was on that show. Oh, was she really? Yeah. Ah. She she was on the OC. There you go. Yeah, Willa Holland. Uh, anyway, so Mar- yeah, Marvel's run away. I don't want to talk about it for too much longer. Yeah, it's fantastic. Ma- yeah, fantastic. Get into it. One of my favorite shows of the year. That was so, a Hulu made show too, wasn't it? Uh, it was Hulu. So I don't know how we watched that. Wink, wink. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, what's your number three, there, buddy? Oh, my number three is, and this is this is where the trigger warning is coming for you, Troy. And Jesus. it is The Walking Dead. Oh, see this. This is kind of where my rule came in. Yeah. Because I loved the early seasons of The Walking Dead, but when I look You back, actually got me onto The Walking yeah. Dead. So, you know, you know, swings and roundabouts, Troy. Well, season one blew my mind, Kate. Yeah. It blew my mind. And you know, How it ended with Rick ending up in Atlanta, and you're just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, but anyway, this is your thing. You talk about it. Why, like, why? Why when there's probably more bad seasons <laughs> than good? Well, I guess that's from your point of view, yeah. because, like... The Walking Dead has always kind of been this type of show that has, a, I guess, a slower burn to it than what most TV shows do. And it's not uncommon for AMC to do that because you get that with... Um, uh, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, like most definitely. Yeah. And you got that with Breaking Bad because like Breaking Bad could be like a very slow show. It's just the way the AMC writing room kind of works. Oh, man. Breaking Bad, though, never let up 
in my opinion. And that's and that's even fair. In, even in its quiet moments. Yeah. It was still like just tense. Yeah. The whole way through. Whereas The Walking Dead is just it's like just you know, shit. At times. Yeah. And I think the the thing that happened is it kind of brought too much in. Yeah. Like Rick was kind of spreading a bit too thin. There was too many characters brought in. There's like too many strong leads in a TV show like that where you kind of need to tell everyone's story. So you kind of get this watery effect going through, which can be quite hard to like just constantly watch. Yeah. But as a, you know, like a big supporter of those comics, it was like a magical story coming to life for me. Yeah. For me too, for for the longest time. Uh, And it's, look, realistically, it's probably only the last kind of like, Six, seven, and eight. Yeah. As far as seasons go, that I just, nah. And it's like, uh, nah, I'm done. Nah, I'm done. And you watch the next one, you're like, I, I'm definitely done this time. And then you just say, like, it's like crack. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've never I, had I've crack, quit. but I'm assuming I've that. Quit. You know, I'm, I'm clean. Yeah. What's that? You got some crack? <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did, did, I hear, did I hear someone say crack? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that. Um, yeah, that's good, man. Number three, that's pretty high, but you know, whatever. Hey, man, it's my list. Look, I will say uh, I do have a list of honorable mentions, and it is on my list of honorable mentions. Oh, well, that's good. So I'll give it that. At yeah. Least. So, you know, it's not that triggerish. Uh, my number three. Yes. Legion. Good pick. Yeah. Good pick. Would have been on mine. It's in my honorable mentions, but because of the rules I, sp- I put in place, yeah. it this would have been like probably number one. Damn, that's too high. You reckon? Yeah. Just purely because. <sighs> Maybe number two. At times, it's very inaccessible. It's too weird sometimes. Yeah. So there, there are points in the show where you're kind of like, what the, the what the fuck is happening right now? Why do you get taken away in a little ball spaceship? Yeah. Eventually, it all comes around and it all makes sense. You've just got to go through this insane trip to get there. And that's what I like about it so much is the fact that, you know, it is still set within, you know, the cinematic X-Men universe, right? We know that because... Uh, there's been reference to Professor X and yes. he is apparently coming at some point. His chairs even made an yeah, appearance. In the future of the show. So, you know, it's, I guess, when you've kind of got that and then you throw in Noah Hawley's kind of like his writing and then you, you throw in the visuals of this show, it's just, it is dead set stunning and it's like nothing you've ever seen before. And sometimes you forget you're even watching like a, like a, a superhero show or a comic book TV show, and then shit happens. and You're like, "Fuck yeah, that's right, they're all mutants." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's, and like, it's like so casually approached. Yeah, but it's cool as fuck. Yeah, not even cool as shit. It's, it's next cool. level. Wow, it's cool as fuck. You know what I mean? I do. So I yeah, do. so I, I rate that uh, quite highly. Um, Dan Stevens is great as David Haller. Uh, I, what, what I just love say? that you're guessing the whole time. Yeah. That's good. It's really like, hey, what is real? What's not? Exactly. And look, when you when you're looking at the the underlying, you know, uh, I guess problems with, uh, I don't know, like mental illness and stuff, it's kind of addressed in there, and they yeah. take it seriously, and you know, it's not something that's just kind of pushed to the side. Like they do address it, you know, in a really kind of like positive and grown up manner. I still don't know I, when it's like. set. And that's the thing. Like, oh, that's it what's kills so good me. about it. It like, kills me. It's just this timeless thing. And I don't know what's real and I don't know what is real. <laughs> oh, that show gets me. Yeah. But the, but any show that can incite those kind of emotions and at the same time visually blow you away and leave you oh, thinking and guessing. It's good. It's good. You know it's good. That's my number three. All right. Let's move on to my number two. Now, this is where it gets really, really hard because I... I got I got my last two picks. There's a short show and there's a long show. Okay. I'm going to go number 2 is my long show. And the only reason for this is because it had dips, peaks and drops. Agents of Shield. Uh, that's my number 2. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, Agents of Shield, uh boy, it really brought it home. We might last. have the same number 1, number 2. I think we might. I think mm-hmm. we might. So yeah, Agents of Shield, man, this show has it it started off strong. And it went to shit. I don't know what happened. It's almost like it tried to just distance itself too much from the MCU. Season three? I think or so. season two? I think season two. Yeah. Is like it just kind of really started going downhill. Yeah. And then it just brought it back. And it brought it back really strong. Yeah. They, they brought back a character that like no one's seen for the longest time in, oh my God, I've gone blank on the name, Skullman, 
Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. <laughs> I was thinking Nicolas Cage. <laughs> well, you just say Nicolas Cage. Yeah, we Nicolas know Cage. Who you're talking about. Um, but yeah, like what a season that was. Oh man! And the way they kind of like rehash their, I guess, the show structure, where it kind of tells like two to three different stories within a season. So like things don't feel like they drag. Brilliant. Well, it's three, three different kind of like connected but unique storylines yeah. in season four, and that's what kind of brought it back. Like I think it would have been on its last legs and if they didn't turn it around and do what they did with it like we wouldn't have gotten a season five oh, definitely. and we wouldn't be getting a season six for sure do you know what i mean so like they they did a really good job and having ghost rider in there is that that sort of you know that x factor if that's what you want to call it like that's just like it was a brilliant move and probably one of the best seasons like one of the 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 easiest to devour 22 episode oh. seasons i like of tv i've ever watched I don't know if I'd say like ever, but like of a comic book TV show for sure. Like name name twenty two seasons that you watched quicker. Uh, twenty two episodes in a yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I probably couldn't off the top of my head, but that's kind of like this this whole thing. Like every seven or so episodes, they're just changing it up. Yeah, you know, and they they, they did a really good thing. And I'm not basing my my love of the show based purely on that one season. But it's a good season. But it's a good season. And season five has been pretty good too. Like it's been, you know, um, season one was good. Season four was amazing. Season five has been great. Um, season two was, I'm sure two was good and then three was terrible. I think, yeah, I'm, I have a feeling season three is when it all went all downhill. Yeah. So, but you know, anyway, like, you know, you look at the cast that they've got together. Um, they've been together for a long time, uh, you know. Well, what I love, Troy, is that we got Fitz and Simmons, and we hate relationships on comic book TV shows. Yeah. We hate them. These two were always background players, and now they're almost like the heroes of the show. Yeah. I like it. I couldn't care what's happening with Daisy. I couldn't care what's happening with Mac. Yeah. I only care about... Just give me Fitz and Simmons. Fitz give and me Simmons. a spinoff show. Oh, would you have a spinoff? What was the spinoff they were going to do? It was... Um, <laughs> what was that guy's name? The, the English dude. It was the English dude. Bobby and... Bobby and Jack? Billy and Bobby. Billy, yeah, it's maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone can, uh, you know, let us know what that was. I can't remember. But yeah, they were going to have a spin-off that didn't even get off the ground. Yeah. Like the, the pilot didn't even get shot. Yeah. And that's probably a good thing. Because that probably. was kind of where I like started to tune out. Yeah. Like when they kind of started to get involved a bit more. And then I kind of came back. Like not long after they had left, really, and that's when I started to to sort of really get invested in the show again. Um, what I like though is that um, I can't remember the guy's name. He made an appearance at the start of this season, and they never brought him back. Who was that? The other half of that little duo that we're going to spin yeah, off. Him. Yeah, him. Yeah, that's, that's who I'm trying to talk about. Yeah, because Bobby was the girl. Yeah, and the guy was. I want to say Mac, but I know it's not it's Mac. Definitely, they wouldn't have two Max. Mac City baby. Big Big Mac, Little Mac. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Mac def- Jr. It definitely wasn't Mac. Um, feel free to look that up. Someone let us know. Yeah, someone let us know. Anyway, but yeah, they brought him back to, to help Fitz, and then it's like, oh, yeah, See bye. See you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive out there. Yeah. That timeline isn't, like, busted. No, I know. <laughs> Very strange. He's, uh, like, just this rogue shield agent. Yeah. So whether he comes back or not, then, you know, who knows. Uh, what else can we talk about that? We talk about Agent Shield a lot. I guess the biggest thing... Is and we spoke about it at the top of the show that fucking no one in Australia picks it up. Oh, it kills me, like, man! What the fuck? And like you know, we went to to Supernova and we sat in on um, Elizabeth Hentridge's panel, and she was great, but she couldn't fucking talk about anything. Yeah, because we were so far behind on the show. <laughs> anything that she spoke about would have been spoilers because not everybody magics this stuff. They try to watch it on Seven Mate or TV when they can. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, oh, those poor bastards! It was so limited to to what she could talk about for this current season. Disappointing. It was just so frustrating, man. Uh, Agent Shield, my number two. Your number two. Yep. All right. All right. It's your number one. Back to you for your number, number one. Number one, and I'm. I feel like we're we're channeling each other here, Troy. Right. Number one, Daredevil. Indeed. Yeah. The, hard to hard to fault. Uh, yeah. Hard to fault. Mate, the best, like easily, easily the best comic book TV show to ever be made. I would, look, we're talking about a show that's only had two seasons. Yep. But I think what they managed to do 
in those two seasons, especially in the first season, um, the characters that they managed to give us, the universe they basically they managed built from to, it. to build. It's the MCU, Netflix's MCU's Iron Man. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah, effectively. Um, you've got Charlie Cox as um, as Matt Murdock, Daredevil. But for me, it was Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. Absolutely. That absolutely stole the show, mate. Stole the show by a long shot. And just a character that when it popped back, like when he popped back up in season two, you're like, fuck your Kingpin. Yeah, and yeah. then season three, they're like, what villain do you want? It's like, fuck, give me some Kingpin. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we all want Bullseye and stuff like that, but give me some Kingpin. Like, I would not care if he came back in season three. Just make him a recurring character. Yeah. That's all I want, man. He's like, he's so threatening. He's so calm. Yeah. He's so dangerous. Yeah. And just, you know, like menacing and Vincent D'Onofrio pulled off. <laughs> I was going to say Winston D'Onofrio pulled off Wilson Fisk <laughs> like really well, but, you know, phrasing and all that. Yeah. It's crazy to think that this guy played the cockroach man in Men in Black. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it boggles me. He it's was like, on Law and Order as well. Yeah, he was. Throwing another little dun 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 dun. Yeah. Sort of thing. So, yeah. But, uh, man. The, the the action sequences, um, just the the hallway fight scene. Mate, you'll never look at a hallway the same way again. You'll just want to kick things. Oh, mate. And flip when, and shit. Whenever I go look at houses to buy now, I'm like, oh, I don't know how many people I could kill in this hallway. <laughs> yeah. What's your biggest hallway? Yeah. Because all I'm looking for is just basically just give me a house that's a hallway with some rooms off to the side. Yeah, that's, that's all, all I, I want. want. Yeah. Uh, and that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, season two, like season two, like had its moments where it wasn't, you know, when we flipped to that kind of Electra storyline, it wasn't as strong. But even if, even in its weakest moments, it's still better than a lot of shit that's on TV. <laughs> Easily. But it gave us the it gave us the Punisher in the first half of that season. Oh, and that so was good. fucking amazing. That's some of the best TV you'll ever see. Oh, easily. Oh. So. So that's it. Like Daredevil. Like I like I can't speak highly enough of this series. I'm killing myself for season three. Oh. They haven't announced when it's coming out yet. Come There's on, just do it. Kind of been some rumors kind of floating around that, well, you know, they have actually cast Bullseye instead of just this uh I think they were gonna go with Sin Eater. Everyone was kind of thinking it was. Oh really? And now they're like, Oh no, actually that's Bullseye. So, you know, if that Ooh. happens, that's cool, man. I'm so freaking excited. Where do you go after Bullseye though? Oh, I've, I don't know. Just tuck me in. I'm <laughs> yeah, done. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, done, mate. Put a fork in me. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'd be happy to just bow out there. Yeah. Just give me three. It solid might be seasons. what they need to do. Yeah. So there you go. So just uh, give me a recap of you five. Okay. You so that? I had I Zombie yep. as number five. Yep. Had Smallville number four. The Walking Dead number three. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. number two, and Daredevil number one. Nice. Give me your top six. Uh, so, I had, <laughs> so I had Happy at number six. I had Runaways at number five. Uh, I had Legion at number four. I Zombie at number three. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at number two, and Daredevil at number one. Now, look, I'm going to quickly just rattle off a couple of honorable yeah, mentions that um, wouldn't have made my, my list because of, you know, certain things. So there was Runaways. Yeah. We already spoke about. Yeah. Legends of Tomorrow. Yep. This close. It almost knocked off iZombie. Ooh, yeah. Actually, now that you say that, I'm surprised that it didn't make your list. Yeah, it was it was such a hard pick. And it was kind of like it came down to the thing of what had more better seasons. Yeah. And iZombie did. Uh, Lucifer. Yeah, haven't mm. seen it. Oh, mate, you got to get on board. This is going to trigger you. Preacher. Yeah, see, it's... I liked season one of Preacher. I know. Right? But so where would that sit on your list then? Like, would that count as like better no because it's had two seasons yeah and one was bad one was good so, so you gotta go to the bad yeah so yeah, that's you know fair. it's like 50 50 it could go either way and unfortunately that kind of gets it tossed off my list fair enough uh legion was on there first season of jessica jones half a luke cage <laughs> yep. um last season of gotham because it's been actually pretty decent right and you can't just pick and choose seasons, I know, mate. I know. <laughs> and here's one, like a blast from the past, just because I enjoyed it in my childhood. Yeah. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures <laughs> of Superman. <laughs> See, I did I did a little bit of research for this show because yeah. I'm like, well, you know, I want to give everything like a like a fair slog. So I went back and like I checked out some Lois and Clark because I remember loving that as a kid. Yeah. And then I went and checked out uh, Superboy, which was um, back in the late 80s, early 90s as well. Wow. Uh, which went for like four seasons. 
It's just terrible, man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just like I get it for the time. Yeah. But I just I can't, you know, like. I'm a I'm a now man. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like I it doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up. I love the things that we're getting right now. And maybe twenty years in the future, I'm gonna look back on this and go, Oh my god, Legion, that's so shit visually. I can't yeah. believe that was like the cool stuff then. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh but yeah, yeah, I guess for me, uh, uh I had a couple. Walking Dead obviously, Smallville was there, Constantine. I uh, only got one season, but yeah, I know. I loved it. Loved it was it. great. Um I, I actually didn't mind the first season of The Gifted. I was iffy on it. I'm just an X-Men fan, yeah. I guess. So I just, you know, I get into that shit. Uh, season one of the, uh, Jessica Jones. Season one of The Punisher. But, you know, it's like it, from what we got in That wasn't Daredevil, really The Punisher. Yeah, well, yeah. But what we got in Daredevil wasn't good. Like, you know, it didn't follow up yeah. well enough from that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'd say Legends of Tomorrow would be there in the first couple of seasons of The Flash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. Let us know what you think. Uh, what are your, what are some of your favorites? Don't necessarily have to be all time favorites. What are your, some, what are your, some, what are some of your favorite comic book live action TV shows? And that's going to do it for another episode. Stay tuned for next week's show where we review the highly anticipated Deadpool 2. Damn straight. And the week after that, the also it's, highly anticipated... Is it? The, the, the somewhat the anticipated... The movie nobody asked for. Uh, but got and is apparently pretty good from what we've heard so far. I don't know. Uh, Solo or Star Wars story we're talking yeah. about. I'm, I'm super keen for it. You give me anything Star Wars... I'm, I'm out there. You know what? I'm like so excited that for that movie because I have like zero expectations. Yeah, and that's I guess that's the the best thing. Uh, Deadpool two, I have high expectations for. See, I don't. I'm gonna go in there and just be like, eh. Was well, I just rewatched Deadpool? And I kind of think it's like it's amped up my expectations even more. Now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but very keen for that. Right. That's all coming up. Got a question for you? Yes. Could you ever look at Ryan Reynolds like in any other movie and not think of Deadpool now? Um. When you look at Ryan Reynolds in every other movie he's been in, he's pretty much Deadpool. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's kind of like, like one characteristic of it. Yeah. It's just, it just depends on, you know, like what he's trying. He's always kind of playing the same person. Just sometimes he gets Was to he like the first rub James his Franco? balls in your face. Huh? Was he the first James Franco? Yeah. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. There you go. But he did it right. He did it right. Um, Canada's, Canada's sweetheart? Canada sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's a thing that's happening. Uh, hey, we've got some social media stuff. What yeah, we is do. That? You know what, Troy? I'm going to plug it all this week. Oh, damn. Yeah, all of it. So all uh, of it. your listeners, get your little pen and papers out because you're going to want to remember this. You can find us on Facebook under Comic Confidential Podcast. Simply search that in your little top bar area or wherever you search on Google. I mean, Facebook. Mm-hmm. You can find us on Google too. We are there. We, we show up everywhere. We also have Instagram and Twitter. That's at Comic Con Pod. However, we also have a listener community back on Facebook. So just go back to Facebook. <laughs> just for a second. Just for a second. Close your other apps. Close your I other apps. I know you just opened Twitter and Instagram on your two phones. Or if you're writing this down, like just draw an arrow straight back up to like Facebook and write down Comic Confidential Listener Community. Right. And you want to join that because you can like chat with other listeners of the show about some pretty cool topics. We have some polls in there. Yep, sometimes. Who had the better list, Kate or Troy? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I got nothing to say. I mean, like, I won the last I mean, one. half of it was, like, well, look, the it same. Was, look, I just, wanna, I just want to, you know, I, I kind of berated the people a little bit earlier that voted for the Cornetto trilogy not being an actual trilogy, but I didn't get to speak to my people. Oh. My people, you know. You're, that, t- you're <laughs> too busy focusing on the hate yeah, exactly. to actually appreciate. To, to appreciate or celebrate. Uh, so I want to celebrate uh, you guys that actually, you know, stuck by me and said, hey, you know what? Shut up, Cade, you fat nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone said that. There were a couple of comments. Did you I remove got, them? I got, I got DM'd. <laughs> What's that fat prick saying? <laughs> he's obviously had too many Cornettos to know what he's talking about. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, yeah, and basically, uh, thank you for sticking by me and you know, getting me that solid win. <laughs> Team Troy. Team Troy all the way. Uh, 
What else we got? We got a website. We have a website. That's ComicConPod.com. Past episodes, future episodes, and everything in between. We also have a Patreon. So if you want to support the show, you can do that from as little as a dollar a week, Troy. And that's going to get you a bonus episode. That's, bonus episode. That's not released to anyone else but Patreon members. Damn straight. So last week we had a very special guest. We did. Uh, oh, yeah. You, t- yep. you talk about it. Nicholas Cage. You missed out. Yeah, I did. Uh, I wasn't able to to be there for it but uh, from all reports you know he was he was uh, you know he was Nicolas Cage he was boy he uncaged <laughs> he was uncaged uh yeah so that happens uh every single week uh different tiers you get different stuff uh from five dollars and above you get a whole new show it's called Netflix and chat that comes out next week next week um so yeah that's uh that's happening that's us we're in it we're in it it's like it's Sort of different because it's got a different title. And it has a theme song. And it's got a jingle, like yeah. a legit jingle. And there's no swearing. We haven't fully discussed that uh, yet. You've signed the contract, <laughs> mate. Uh, if you say fuck, you're fucked. How dare you censor me? I can't help it, mate. How dare you? This is like some sort of, I don't know. I feel like, I feel you're a goddamn communist. Deal you know? with it. You're I'm Red Sun Superman. <laughs> you can deal with it. Uh, and we have a website to talk about that. Yeah, we yeah, do, mate. Talk about Keep Patreon. Did talk about Redbubble. No, we have, who we haven't talked about Redbubble in the longest time. No, anyway, Redbubble is the thing. Yeah. Get on it. You buy shirts and shit from it. You know, like I actually like I know we're gonna wrap this up, but I just want to have a little bit quick rant. I jumped on Redbubble. Yeah. Because I'm like, hey, I need some new shirts. And like, I'll get some new shirts, like uh, some some of our stuff. Yeah. Right. Fuck. Yeah. You know how fucking hard it was to find, and then like I found it. And then I couldn't actually shop because it's like, you know, hey, you can only get this shirt in this style. And it's like, well, no, you can't. They're fucking everywhere. Yeah. But how do you search that? You fucking don't. Because Redbubble is like, it's insane. It's terrible, isn't it? Um. So, you know, hey, I don't know if there's like another thing we can do. Maybe. Because <laughs> Redbubble is doing my fucking head in. There is other outlets. Yeah, I'm we'll trying, look at some I'm other trying to outlets. buy some damn TV, TVs. I'm trying to buy some damn t-shirts, son. I'll have a look. All right. I think we'll go to T Public. Anyway, just just fix something. It. <laughs> just just do something with just that fix shit. It. Just fix it. That's it, man. That's it. Let's that's wrap it. this bad boy. Uh, wrap it up. Uh, that is it. As always, uh, I'm Troy. I'm Cade, and this has been Comic Confidential. Cheers. Peace. Pretty sure we're on T Public too. Are we? Maybe. Oh man, I couldn't do it. Oh, I was really? trying to do it on my fucking like iPad, oh. and I'm like, you know what? You're not getting my money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you blew it, man. Yeah, you. You pointing to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to get a cent from me because you're just fucking with my life. And there's some good shit on there, man. There is. I want some I want some of that good, good stuff. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I just fucking can't be fucked. If you love this podcast, then head over to ComicConPod.com to check out the other incredible shows on our network. You can also support us on Patreon from as little as $1 a month. You'll get early access to all our shows, plus secret supporter content that's not available to the public. Head over to Patreon.com forward slash ComicConPod to find out more.